And I'll just come into this to knowing that this isn't quite the right um, hue for this. I want a little bit more variety, but I think it is about the right value. So um, I'm going to err on the side of value almost always. You are going to learn from a pastel master today. Welcome to Margla Be Mar Marla Begetta. Margla, how are you? I'm great, Eric. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be painting for you guys today. Well, what are you going to do for yeah. us today? Well, um, I'm kind of excited because the last time I saw you, Eric, was in Canada at Fall Color Week, right. which was amazing. And so I'm going to do a little scene from that trip, which is so beautiful. So sparkly so, little scene, and that's what I have planned. Is it a snow scene? Yep. Yeah, because we yep. had we had unexpected snow, didn't we? <laughs> no, we didn't. <laughs> and that was a little daunting. I was like, oh, no, it's going to snow. But it was amazing. It was really, really amazing. That's when I discovered that I actually liked snow painting. I, I had a bad yeah. attitude about snow painting before that, but... Uh, even though it was very cold. Of course, we had some places we could stand in the windows and paint out the windows. That was kind yeah. of... Yeah, no, it was fantastic, the whole experience, the people. And I don't know if you remember this, but I was there when it was my mom's 80th birthday, and that was a big, big no-no. And that whole, remember that morning, that whole group, it was like 70 or 80 people? Yeah. They, we sang happy birthday to my mom. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Yeah, it was fantastic. That was pretty special. Yeah, it's well, that's special. that's a fun group. Now we yeah. we just got together. Yeah. We had about forty of us at Fall Color Week in in New Hampshire. We managed to pull it off. Oh, uh, the great. only live event we've been able to do all year. But uh, it oh. was reduced in size, which was actually kind of nice because. Oh yeah, yeah. We were able 40s. to distance and and still paint, and it was a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah, For, well, 40, that's a great group. I'm sure you guys had a great time. I'm always so enchanted. Every time I'm working in oils or acrylics or watercolors for a while, I, and I come back to the pastels, I am so um, amazed by um, their beauty. They're just so enchanting. So Such vibrancy. Yeah. Well, I should yeah, mention yeah. That, that Marla, uh, we, t we talked about meeting at Fall Color Week. Uh, she is yeah. quite the entrepreneur and teacher. <laughs> she has a site called paintinglessonswithmarla.com. You might write that down, put it in the comments, yeah. or put it in the, do a screenshot so you can learn more about that. She's been doing a lot of teaching during COVID, and she is yeah. a phenomenal teacher. I highly recommend her. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, right. to uh, step off camera and let you okay. go ahead and start. All right, super. Yeah, so today I have a little lesson planned for you guys. Um, I'm going to paint a scene from the Fall Color Week, as I said, and um, I love to do a little thumbnail sketch ahead of time, um, and so I keep a little sketchbook. I like this craft paper to do the sketches on it, kind of mutes the colors down a little bit. This is a sketch that's watercolor and gouache. And make some notes. So I'll give you some other examples. So I always print out the reference material just so I have it at the ready and can remember what I did. And so um, this is really helpful to me. Because by the time I get up there to my final piece, I've kind of got it worked out. What make kind of some notes, notes are you putting in there? Uh, you know, my notes are anything from just really something super personal or some, it may relate to what I have in mind, some kind of uh, note about the atmosphere and my feeling, for my, the mood of the place, something like that. But yeah. sometimes it's just like, oh, having a bad day, painting's making it better, <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, you're, that's yeah. a new product for you. You should publish a journal of your sketchbooks, uh, show your reference photos uh, and your notes. Be yeah, I think... Idea. I think they're beautiful, aren't they? Yeah, this is Taos. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I, I like these a lot too. Okay, but today I'm going to paint this uh, this one here. So um, yeah, and um, this is a really kind of bright, fun, glittery scene from, gosh, Eric, maybe you can help me pronounce it. Um, it Kananaskis Can State Park. Kananaskis, ah. That's a tough one. That's a really tough one. 
Yeah, okay. Which is in between, it's by Banff and Lake Louise, but uh, uh, about, uh, about an hour from there. Yeah, it's amazing. All right, so I'm just going to get started. I'll probably get um, some good headway on this today. Um, and um, I always like to start out just with, um, um, can you guys go to the, are we on the? Yes. All right, great. And oh, I need to put my hair up so that I don't have it in the way. Always I have, make that I have mistake. that problem too. Oh, do you? Yeah, well, I'm gonna, um, I got a good hair gene from my mom and dad, so got a lot of it. Um, Can you speak to how you have your pastels laid out? Yes. Um, very um, intentionally, they are set up by hue, value, and saturation. And if you notice, there are no wrappers on the pastels. Um, they are, uh, and, and that's also very intentional because of the, each pastel is a, a little tool that can act like a really wide variety of brushes. And if you've got the wrappers on, you've only got access to the ends, to the tips, and you've sort of, you've kind of defeated the purpose. So none of what them brand, have the wrappers. What brand of pastels do you use? Good question. They're all a, a very wide variety of brands. Each brand has particular um, characteristics that can be employed in a piece. So I would, um, there are some pastelists that like to stick with just one or two brands, but there's so many amazing pastels on the market right now that um, I just love them. So there are a lot of Unison. There are uh, Terry Ludwig. There are new pastels, Blue Earth. Um, what else? Giro's I like very much. Mount Vision. So lots of different brands. Um, and they all are just a little bit different. So, um, you know, I just find um, that it, it really widens the breadth of, you know, techniques and things that I can do by having a nice variety of brands. Oh, so, I, yeah. I, see a, I see a little heart, a white heart down in the purple. What is that? Yeah. So Terry Ludwig, he's there, you know, they're really amazing. And um, they, they, they make these as little gifts for not just special people, not just special friends, but you know, every now and then when you order something, they you'll you'll get a little surprise in there. And so I just like the way it looks on the palette. So I leave, I put them in there. Very nice. So I, I don't really use them, but um, yeah, they're pretty. Okay, all right. So I'm going to get started. And um, can you guys put up? All right, good to go. All right. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to give myself a little bounding box, a little floating box here. And I uh, prefer not to paint to the edge here. Some pastelists paint to the edge and um, frame in a particular way that, um, that that works. But I like to frame my finished pastels with a mat still. Um, and this floating box gives me a couple of things. For me, it, uh, it, it tells me something about the picture plane and, and what I'm, what's happening. It's easier for me to see the negative shapes within this rather than at the edge of the paper. The other thing it does is it gives me a little place to make practice marks. And to me, that's very, very important because I don't want to be putting product over product. I want to keep as thin as possible for as long as possible. So by testing out the strokes ahead of time, the color relationships, what the pastel is actually doing, um, just sort of mechanically, um, this little area gives that to me. And the other thing it does, if I need to adjust my composition just slightly, I have a little bit of wiggle room. And if I paint it to the edge, you know, I'm kind of don't have that. Now today I'm, my thumbnail is a rectangular proportion, and I'm preferring today to do a square. Now, I just like the squares. I think they're, it's a really dynamic proportion to compose within. I also think that they look good as a finished piece, and they have a little bit of a kind of modern bent, and I'm not sure what the, that is about it that I 
that how I feel about that, but that's what I think. So I, I like what the kind of paper. What kind of paper are you? Using? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for reminding me. Um, this is pastel matte, and I love this paper. It comes in a lot of beautiful colors. Um, it's a, a, considered a multimedia paper, and it has a very very smooth surface, um, and it grabs onto the pastels in a very particular manner, quite different than some of the other pastel papers, but I love it and okay. I've been using it. Oh gosh, you know, we'd have to look. Can we, right. can we do that? But I'll get, I'll come, I'll swing back around to that. So I'm going to start in with just kind of a, 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 a sketch, kind of wash in um, some of these shapes. And I'm going to make some adjustments to this from this thumbnail to the square proportion. So that's something to be aware of. Usually when I'm painting, say in plain air, I'm going to try to be pretty intentional and keep my um, final the same proportion as my thumbnail so that I really, um, uh, really achieve what I wanted to achieve in the thumbnail in terms of composition. But in this case, I'm in the studio. I feel pretty confident about it. And so I, I'm going to go ahead and make a little change. So I'm just going to get in here and wash in some, some of these shapes real loose. And I'm, I'm concerned about a couple things, thinking about that I want my scene. I want my trees to be not static. It's a living, breathing scene. So I'm going to give it a little more uh, gesture than perhaps sort of exaggerate that. But I, <laughs> funny enough, I find that when I exaggerate it, it usually winds up being just about right. I think I'm exaggerating it, but um, usually it's just winds up just about right. So that's kind of funny. And as long as I have been painting, which is a long time, I've been teaching. Oh, I've been teaching for 25 years now. It's crazy. Uh, so. It flies anyway. when you're having fun. Yeah, I know. And I have. I feel so fortunate to. Um, I've been doing this. Uh, my I, I've never really had a. At a, at a real job, I've been a um, full-time painter pretty much my whole career. Started out as an illustrator. So, are you thinking yeah. at all about values yet? Um, I am a little bit. So, just with this washing this in, so I'm establishing a couple things. See this? This is my um, little fall tree in the light. So I'm leaving the paper here because I don't want to put. Um, light over dark here. I want to keep it as thin as I can. Here's my mountain shape in the distance. Kind of probably simplify this. Here is the, this, this tree here. And then I have this other angled plane here. And this is where that glow is that I'm going to try to ca catch, hopefully. And some other foliage. Just keeping it loose and playful at this point. There's the sweep of the 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 uh, this bank, and this is where that light is spilling into my scene. I'll just kind of get that sort of placed. Here's this little. There's a little pine tree that's right here, and I'm going to put that in. It it's kind of a little detail that maybe isn't necessary, but it's going to act. It's going to kind of frame my composition and act as a little uh, stopper that I think will be somewhat effective, I hope. And so just get that in there like so. So that's kind of about all I need in terms of a, a beginning sketch. It's pretty loose and crazy. And at this point, it's really just a map for me. It doesn't have a lot. Uh, of uh, definition to it yet, but I like that about it. All right, so that's pretty good. So now what's next? That's always the thing, <laughs> where do you start? Well, you know, 
I don't have a, a thing where I'm going to start from the top and work to the bottom, nor do I really think about, other than thinking I want to stay thin, as thin as I can for as long as I can, I am not considering or, or giving um, sort of precedent to um, uh, hard to soft. Um, that is a good train of thought to work hard pastels to soft ones. However, what I really am more concerned about is establishing the value and color relationships as quickly as I can so I can start to see the piece as a unified whole or at least see my way into it as such as quickly as I can. So to that end, I'm going to pick out some things that are going to get me there. And I think I want to put some of that gold in for that, that tree because then I can kind of key off of that a little bit. So I need to get something in. You've got to start somewhere. So I'm going to start here. And it's nice and bright. And just get it in there. And that's, <laughs> that's kind of going to be the, the, main, the main focal point here. Now, um, next, I need something for that snow. Just a main, I'm thinking about just kind of a main wash keeping it really simple at first, knowing, anticipating that I'm going to be adding on, that I'm going to be layering in more color to get that kind of optical mixing, but to start, keep it simple. So I'm thinking this, see that? It's pretty dark, but I think it's not bad. I think it's about right, at least to begin with. I want to make sure that this isn't too, um, too light. So just really just sim simple, kind of like a wash, kind of uh, swiping it in, the big swiping stroke with the whole stick. Uh, and, but notice that I'm letting some of the paper pop through because I'm going to come back over with some more layers. So at first, keeping it thin. And then there's this other back here, like so. So that's not bad. There's some of this. So I want to try to, what else can I do with this while I've got it in my hand? And I want to um, keep my palette also as limited as I can for as long as I can. This might be right for the snow up here on the mountains. Not quite sure yet. Don't know yet, but could be. So I'm just going to put it there just to remind myself that, okay, maybe. Next, I want to establish, I think, this. Now it's backlit. It's got that, that sun behind it. Um, so maybe starting with something a little bit lighter. Maybe something like this. I love this. This is beautiful kind of um, dulled green, and, but still it's got some chroma to it. So understanding that those three uh, elements, aspects of color, hue, value, and saturation are just um, that foundational knowledge is just key to um, getting all this going. I think that's pretty good. And now, um, now something a little darker. And notice that I'm not concerned about the sky yet. I'm going to knit the sky in and around these shapes. And I'll just come into this too, knowing that this isn't quite the right um, hue for this. I want a little bit more variety, but I think it is about the right value, so um, I'm going to err on the side of value almost always, probably always. All right, um, I'm thinking about some of that. 
Uh, yeah. And that might be a little light. I'm, this is the this light side of this foliage mass in the front of the pine. And again, keeping it really simple. I don't want to be doing individual leaves and branches and such at all. Not at this stage. And then that I think will work in there for that maybe a little bit here. So now I'm kind of getting somewhere. And um, let's see, what else, what else do I want to do now? Okay, some of the edge of that pine tree. And that's the same as the other one. I want to shift it a little bit different hue. So get something more like that in here for this. Just to start, just to get a little something in here. Okay, now, 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 now that I've got that there, it's, I think, a good time to start thinking about the sky and the snow, the, the snow that's in the light. And I have this, <laughs> I have this one Terry Ludwig here that's, it's got some sparkles on it. And uh, I want to use this, but not yet. <laughs> it's, I think it'll be fun to use. I'm going to try this one now in here. This one's got some sparkles too. So what is it like glitter? Yeah. Isn't that fun? How fun. I know. Yeah, that's super fun. Yeah, I think that's not, I, I want it to uh, be a little more gestural. I think that's not bad. Now I want to tackle this up here. Um, gosh, what do I want to do up there? Um, I want to get a little something for the, the bank here. start carving out. So I, I kind of put down the, the, this wash and now I can start carving into the, the, those layers and really establishing my shapes and um, getting it a little more together. Hey mm -hmm. Marla, a little word for your crew. The, the camera over the pastel, the red battery oh. is flashing. It needs to get some okay. power, you're going to lose it. The battery is flashing up there. Thank you. You're welcome. It's good to have pairs of eyes. <laughs> we do a lot of battery watching around here. It's crazy. All right. Oh, yeah, that's kind of nice, starting to pull together. Right here, there's the corona the refraction of the sun on the edge of this, so I would like to try to get that. Um, I, I kind of got it a little bit, a, su a suggestion of it in the thumbnail, and so it'd be fun to try to get it. So I'm, I'm going to come along with something like this right on this edge sometimes stuff like this can it's kind of can can be kind of tricky i mean it can kind of come across in a painting as a little um trite or whatnot but so you know kind of want to be a little careful about it but i think i might be able to pull it off if anybody can pull it off, you can oh, pull it off. I, no I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> give it a give it a try. It's worth trying. 
you know, and I always feel like, you know, if you don't, if the thing with painting, uh, well, with anything, I guess, it, I, what I love about painting is it is this great analogy for life. If you don't take any chances, you're not going to get better. So you've got to get in there and, and take a few chances every now and then. So, I'm going to go ahead. I'm pressing kind of hard by, by now on that, which is a little counter to what, what I usually try to do, but also have limited time. So, I try to make, it, try to make this happen. All right, and now I'm going to get in there with some sky color. The other thing I, I'm not a big, big, big fan of is blue sky. Because blue sky, it's really easy to have the blue sky just kind of kill. If you get it too dark in value, it can kind of kill um, the, the value relationships and make everything a little too dark. Because the, you know, that Carlson theory of angles, the sky is always the lightest value. Um, so it's, blue, blue is tricky, so gotta got to be careful with it. So I'm gonna, but I'm gonna get some blue in there because we've also got that snow and it's reflecting the blue sky, and we kind of want it. Yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of working. There's my mountain. These clouds, wispy, really beautiful. Gosh, it was gorgeous there. It's just amazing. So now I'm just making some marks, um, kind of playing around with this the the pastel, turning on its edge. This is a Terry Ludwig. It's got a nice sharp edge. So I can get in there and make some um, interesting marks for the sky holes, and I don't want to pick around with that too much yet because I'm, you know, I've got other stuff to do. So I'll circle around. I'll circle back to it. You're kind of blocking okay. the camera with your head. Yeah, is that better? There we go. And you're not supposed to blow like that. <laughs> but also, do as I say, not as I do is always good. <laughs> All right. I'm going to come in to the mountains now, I think. And I haven't decided. I think that that, that blue is a little dark for the snow on the mountains. So I'm going to lighten that up a little bit. Is it difficult to get the uh, pastel to go over a darker color like that without it influencing it? Um, you mean, no, well, not like really. You're, which, you're putting a light over a dark, and will it pick up any of that dark, or will it cover it? It'll, it'll pick it. It'll pick up. It pick it up a little bit, but. Eric, I'm, I'm so thin still that it's okay. I can, I can press and get it, get it in, on there. If I had s started out really thick, then no, then you're in trouble. And that's why it's really important to stay thin um, for as long as you can. Okay. Now I kind of lost some of the darks in the mountains, but I'll come back to that. And I'm, I'm really liking that. All right. Yeah, my, my, my underpainting is so thin that this is no, no trouble.
and I'll just knit that sky in around there. And the shape of this pine, you know, I, I got to fiddle with it a little bit, but for now, I just, right now, I'm just trying to get my everything kind of established. And then later on in the process, I'm going to refine the shapes. I'm going to add on to the colors, get the more nuanced color relationships, some texture, a little bit more mark making, all that fun stuff. But just to get going, I'm just trying to get the thing working as a whole as quickly as I can. Get it, get it to come together. And, and sort of, not sort of, but to m maintain that kind of loose orientation. All right. Now I'm just kind of deepening some of my darks in here because it feels like it's time to do that. And the other thing, I, I don't want to get stuck in one spot for too long because even if I'm not finished, I'll kind of, with an area, I'll kind of bounce around a little bit because I, I really want to make, to make sure that I'm getting the whole thing established. my little tree over here. So kind of getting in there, getting a shape, and then breaking it up again. So making it, and then breaking it. Working the positive and negative shapes back and forth between positive and negative. Now, this mountain, I'm missing the, that, those rich blues on the mountain, and I, I want something maybe like this. I'm thinking it's... Not quite it, but it's more along the lines of what I had in mind. Oh, that's not bad. Okay. A little bit more light on the edge of my trees here. So even if I don't have the hues exactly um, right, I, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm really more interested in making sure I have the values in a, some kind of relationship that makes sense. Eric, how much more time do we have? You have, let's see, we have about... Um 
Oh, about oh, okay. 10 minutes. I'm, I'll make a little more headway. Yeah, you're doing great. Try to get some of these fun little little details happening. Even though I, I probably wouldn't do it yet. Let's see, what else would be fun to do? I'm just trying to, I always am just looking for the thing that's going to just kind of uh, make me happy <laughs> when I'm painting. What's going to be fun to do? Put some snow on a branch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, no, it's true. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, that, or that little sparkly thing, you know, like that. I, I, I do do this, Eric. I intentionally save stuff in a painting. Okay, I'm going to wait to do that because I know that's going to be really fun and it's going to pull it together. And um, So I'll kind of save things for myself. Like, yeah, I mean, that, that kind of stuff's really fun. All right. And pastel, it's such an interesting thing. We're picking, not mixing. Um, I just got done doing a course on color that is um, got a lot of mixing in it because I have all these pastel people, and I think they, it's, it's kind of easy to miss out on some of the um, understanding of color when you're um, never mixing. We have a question. Uh, the question is, what do you do? Do you spray your uh, your final piece uh, with a fixative or something, or do you I, just put it, it under glass? It really depends um, on a couple of things. Um, how how much product do I really have on there? But usually, if it's going to go in a frame, I do um, put it. I do spray it, and I use a fixative very. Um, um, thoughtfully, intentionally, because there's some bad ones out there. And it's very expensive, actually. And um, uh, so you, you have to do it pretty carefully. I have a YouTube video on how I spray, um, it because it, you kind of got to do it right. Um, I love the looseness. Yeah, it's fun. It's it's you know, it's a balance of getting it keeping it loose but being still saying the things that you want to say, making you know, suggesting all the things you want to suggest, but um So it's a it's a dance for sure. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, 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 uh. Do you have a particular fixative you use? Somebody mentioned yeah. hairspray. No. Hairspray, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, hair, hairspray is not archival, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, I mean, if it if you're messing around, and um, then yeah, you know, hairspray might be a something to um, head to. Um, certainly does something. Um, but I use Krylon. Do we have a can of it somewhere? Krylon Fine Art Fixative. Um, I used to use a product called Lesco, but it, when I first started doing pastels, it was 
nine dollars a can and now it's like almost 30 <laughs> and um, so at one point or another I started looking around at other alternatives and here it is thank you Kevin it's this don't use Cry Krylon workable fix it's not the same product it won't do the same thing but this even this it has to be applied in a very um, particular manner um, to get the most effectiveness out of it. So I'm going to get a couple of these branches in just for fun, just so I can pull it together a little bit more, because I'm probably not going to have time to get this completely. You got about seven minutes. All right. All right. Oh boy, Good all question. right. <laughs> Get cracking. <laughs> uh. How often do you go out plein air sketching? Well, I as much as I can. Okay, I'm going to be you know, totally honest. I live in Oregon. <laughs> it rains a lot. Um, Rain and pastel, it, not a good yeah, mix. No, not a good mix. And and you know what? I I I do not like to be cold. Um, that's why I can't believe I went to Fall Color Week and it, you know it was snowing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh my god. Um, I so. But I, there are some amazing um, locations right near me. A beautiful riverfront um, right near my home. Uh, so I, I, I like to go places that I'm familiar with and um, can return to. As I, I'm a big fan of re repetitive painting. <laughs> you know, painting the same scene over and over and painting it in different lighting conditions. Um, I think that it's really it's a really rich way to work. Um, so, and I I also have to um, confess to liking to paint in oils, plain air, a little bit more than the pastels. Um, so, there's something about my my um, oil painting rig that just, I don't know, there's something about, I don't know, there's something so romantic about being out there with that, with those oil paints. Just, I don't know. Well, plus if you, you accidentally spill your pastels on the ground, you're, you're in trouble. Oh yeah. I know what you were going to say. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. It's not a good, it's not a good look. And I, I'm sorry to say I've had some students um, lose their their rigs you know it's not fun and it's also very expensive um, so yeah so you could see this is starting to pull pull together kind of nice some of these little so do you, you, you uh -huh. do you recommend that artists um, try and use different mediums different approaches because some people will say hey stick with pastel till you know it some people say you know try oil try watercolor etc what are your thoughts well you probably can guess what my my thoughts are it, i i feel i personally feel like um, every medium is sort of informs another and that um that that there's learning for instance learning to mix in oil or acrylic is going to help you with your pastel work. It just is. Um, I also find that um, you sort of, I, I, I don't know about you, Eric, but I kind of, having a little break from a medium is just, um, it makes me appreciate uh, the other that I've sort of you know, taken a break from. When I come back to it, I'm like, oh, wow, this is what this is. I was talking um, to a pretty well-known artist yesterday who said the exact same thing. He said he gets bored. 
I get yeah. bored. Yeah. And he needs to get out and try something new and, and you know, yeah. do some things to mix it up to keep it fun. Oh, I, oh, that's it. It's totally it. I, and you know, it, this is not boring. I mean, not, you know, we're, we're not doing boring stuff here. This is really fun, but there's, you know, like even the, the, um, the dustiness, the chalkiness of this, you know, there's something to be said, like taking a little break from it and yeah. like, okay. And, and then coming, coming back. Um, what's interesting. So my tray here, it has a lid. And when I, what I'll do is I'll put the lid on and then I, then I'll be working in acrylic, you know, put my, my, my um, I have a big glass palette. And so it's covered up sometimes for a couple of weeks in a, in a, at a time. And then when it's time to, you know, go back to the pastel and I open up that lid, it's like, whoa, yeah, <laughs> that's what these are. <laughs> It's like, you know, it's so cool. You do the same thing with certain paintings. You just have to get away from them for a while. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 You need that distance, that, that perspective on things. So, yeah, I think this is kind of coming out kind of nice. That, that's sort of working. I, I might would want to work on the just refining the shapes of some of these sky holes, maybe adjusting some of these values just a bit. But I, but I, overall, it's not, not too shabby. Well, I'll mention again that Marla has painting lessons with Marla.com, and you can go in there and, and find online painting lessons and uh, check it out. Yeah, please do. Yeah, it's... We work really hard. We, um, you know, I put all, I, I, I teach um, live workshops all around the country and, and some internationally. And so with this um, crazy, unpredictable time, I've put all my energies into the online lessons so that my students can have a, an experience all, all year round and I do like it because um, rather than just um, working with students for three days and then see you you know I get to stay connected with my students year round and really get an in-depth um, experience and um, it's really been something and I'm I have a very small yet effective and wonderful team they're really committed they're they everybody works so so hard but the thing that that i just cannot even believe how lucky i am is every morning i wake up and know that it's going to be fun it's going to be beautiful it's going to be hard <laughs> but um we we're all working towards the same thing and there's no there's no ego happening in our shop. It's just all, we, we just all kind of work hard and love it. So it's really oh, special. Why don't you it's come really back cool. on camera and we'll say a quick goodbye. All right. Great. All right. All right. Well, this has been yeah. fabulous. Oh, good, good. I'm glad. Yeah. Beautiful Thank job. you so well, much. Thank you so much for inviting me. get a feel for just how big that tray of pa uh, pastels really oh. is. Yeah, it's really, it's really nice. And you know what? There are a lot of pastelists that have way, way more. A lot of my students that do. But this is about all I kind of need. And, uh, but I have, you know, this, this kind of thing takes some, some time to, to accumulate and to um, cultivate. You have but, to be yeah, pretty right. disciplined, though, to make sure you're getting them back in the right place. Um, there's a bit of that. Um, I were, I do. I try to get them back, um, at least in, kind of in the vis right vicinity. Keep them clean. That's other thing. Because if they're not clean and if they're not in the right place, to me, if you if you can't see them, you're not going to use them. I, some of my students will. They have. They'll come to a workshop and they have boxes and boxes. And you know, if you don't if you don't have them in the box, you you're. You know, I mean, if you don't have them laid out, you're not gonna you're not gonna yeah. use them. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. this has been fabulous. Thank you yeah. so much for being on today. It's really a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, we love what thank you do. You. And, and thank okay. you for all your fabulous teaching. Um, 
Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate um, you having me. And um, best of luck. Everybody still stay healthy and happy and painting. That's yep. right. All right. All right. And, uh, happy okay. holidays. Okay. Same All to right. you guys. Bye -bye. Well, that was fabulous. And so I hope you enjoyed that. I uh, want to tell you quickly a couple of things. First off, uh, we have a free gift for you. If you tuned in and you're new to us, uh, we have a new gift. And I, I made a gift and it's called 97 Painting Tips, Amazing Painting Secrets from the World's Best Artist. It's uh, two hours of video. Our gift to you at 97tips.com. Coming up on Sunday, my blog's uh, coffeewitheric.com. And uh, if you don't subscribe, pick it up. Uh, you should check it out. Also, I'm taking a group of painters to Russia in September. We only have 13 seats left out of the 47 that we had available originally. Maybe it's 12 seats left now. Thank you for watching. The goal here is to keep you uh, distracted from all the craziness in the world right now, to keep you positive and upbeat and growing as an artist and learning. Uh, please share this with your friends. Tell others about it. We have a worldwide audience now and people turning in tuning in from 30, 40, 50 countries, and we love having you. And, and uh, some of you are watching the replays. Some of you are watching live. Remember to put a comment in there where you're from, and we'd like to know who you are. But also, we're giving away uh, prizes every day, and uh, tomorrow we've got a great prize. So make sure that you leave a comment so we can grab somebody and uh, give some prizes away. Okay? Thank you for tuning in, and thank you again to Marla. Uh, she is a fabulous teacher, and uh, have a terrific day. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Arts Connoisseur and Plen Air Magazine and part of Streamline Art.